Welcome to my series of videos on mathematics for economists. In this video, I'm going to discuss the solution of systems of linear equations. So I've written down a very simple system here, two equations, two unknowns. And let's first look at the conventional ways of solving this, which you may remember from high school. So uh, with the first one, let's have a look at solution by elimination, where we um, uh, multiply the equations with uh, numbers so as to uh, bring the coefficients on one of the two variables uh, to a line and then uh, we can subtract from each other and thereby uh, eliminate the corresponding variable. So for example here we could do this by multiplying first the first equation by one half and this gives us uh, of course x1 plus 2x2 equals 1 and uh, now I can consider the second equation, 3x1 plus 2x2 equal to 2, and subtract 3 times the equation I just obtained. And this is eliminating the x1 term. So uh, I get a 0 here, and then I have 2 minus 3 times 6, so this is minus 4x2 equals 2 minus 3 times 1, this is minus 1. Yeah. And now, of course, you can see that x2 is a quarter, but you can also just mechanically uh, multiply now this equation by uh, minus 1 quarter, and that will yield, of course, an x2 equals to minus minus is plus, 1 times 1 quarter is 1 quarter, and so we have also very mechanically arrived at the uh, solution value for x2. Now the value for x1, of course, we obtain from uh, this equation here as um, x1 um, plus 2x2 equal to 1. Now you can say, well, just why don't you just plug in? But again, I'm going to be very mechanical here. So I'm subtracting minus 2 times the equation I just obtained. x2 is equal to a quarter. And so I get um, x1. 2x2 minus 2x2 is 0, equals 1 minus 2 times a quarter, that's 1 half. Yeah? Uh, of course, it's the same answer to what I just plugged in, but this gives me my solution. x1 is 1 half, and x2 is 1 quarter. Um, other ways of doing this, uh, for example, the solution by substitution. Yeah, where you first um, you first solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So I could again uh, uh, take this one here and say, okay, x1 is therefore equal to 1 minus 2x2, right? And now I can take the second equation and say 3 times x1, which now is 1 minus 2x2, um, plus 2x2, is equal to 2. Right? Okay, so this is 3 minus 6x2 plus 2x2 equals 2, or bringing 3 over to the right hand side, I get minus 4, minus 6 apples plus 2 apples is minus 4 apples, apples are called x2, uh, 2 minus 3 is minus 1, and then of course I see that x2 is one quarter, um, and x1 is therefore from the initial equation 1 minus 2 times a quarter is 1 half, and I have of course the same answer. Uh, finally, um, we can find the solution by equation. So here I have, um, here I have uh, an equation for x1, um, in the same fashion, I can from the from the second equation, which is 3x1 plus 2x2 equals 2, uh, I can get another equation for x1. So I get 3x1 plus 2 minus 2x2. And if I now multiply the whole equation by one third, I get x1 is equal to 2 third minus 2 third x2. And so these two x1s here, of course, must be the same, this one and this one. 
And so I have 1 minus 2x2 two equals 2 third minus 2 third x2. And so now I bring the x over to the right hand side and the 2 third over to the left hand side. And so I have um, 1 minus uh, 2 third is uh, 1 third. And I have minus 2 third plus 2. Uh, 2 is, uh, uh, is 6 third. So minus 2 third plus 6 third is 4 third x2. Now I can multiply the whole equation by 3 and I get 1 is 4 x2. And of course, I see again x2 is equal to a quarter. And I can go back into my equation for 4x1, four and then, then I get, of course, that, uh, that x1 is equal to 1 half again. Yeah? So um, <clears throat> these are kind of uh, the, the, the conventional ways. Yeah. Now, if we look at these two equations and we introduce the vector x that consists of these two entries, x1 and x2, and we introduce a vector b that consists of these right-hand sides here, these two right-hand sides, 2 and 2, and a matrix A that consists of these coefficients in our, in, on, our, on our x1 and x2 entries in the two equations, 2, 4, and 3, 2. Then we realize that our <coughs> system of equations, the left-hand side, 2x1 plus 4x2, and 3x1 plus 2x2, if I understand them as a vector, are actually the matrix product of the matrix 2, 4, 3, 2, and the vector x1, x2. Yeah. If you need a quick reminder what the product of a matrix with a vector is, you can always use this nifty little scheme here, 2, 4, 3, 2, x1, x2, and then you take 2 times x1, that's 4 times x2 for the first entry on the resulting vector, and 3 times x1 plus 2 times x2 for the second entry, and you realize that this is indeed the same that is standing here. Okay? This now is supposed to be equal, the right hand side of our system of equations, to the vector 2, 2, which we have crescent B. Yeah? So we can, this was A, this was X, so we can write our system of equations in a concise form as matrix A times vector X equals vector B. This is the standard form of writing a linear system of equations in matrix and vector notation. All right. So Let me introduce a more schematic way of achieving the solution. It's really much the same way, only um, a slightly different notation. So let me write the matrix A on the left-hand side of this line and the vector B on the right-hand side. And now I'm going to I'm going to apply elementary row operations elementary row operations these are one multiplication of one row by a number two addition or subtraction of a multiple of one row from another.
addition to, subtraction from, another row, that is. Three, interchange of rows. These three operations are not going to change the solution space of our system. And so, um, well, let's do it. So, so let's multiply the first row here by one half, and we get one, two, one. I haven't done anything on the second row. Now, I subtract three times the first row from the second. This gives me, well, I'm not doing anything with the, with the first row, so let me just copy it. So this gets uh, three times min uh, three minus three times one, that is zero. Two minus three times two, that's two minus six, that's minus four. Two minus three times one is two minus three, is minus one. Now I multiply the second row by minus a quarter. Let me copy the first row because I haven't done anything here. Uh, this gets uh, this gives uh, minus four times minus a quarter. That's just plus one. Minus minus is plus one quarter. Now I'm going to subtract two times the second row from the first. So let me copy the second row because I'm not doing anything with it here. One that we're not using, but we're Taking the multiple off to add it or subtract it from another is called the pivotal row. Um, so I have 1 minus 2 times 0, that's still 1. 2 minus 2 times 1, that's 0. 1 minus 2 times a quarter is 1 minus 1 half, that's 1 half. Okay, what do we have standing here? So if you kind of interpret the scheme that I did here, then you can, in some sense, um, can think of this describing the matrix multiplication 2 times x1 plus 4 times x2 equals 2, 3 times x1 plus 2 times x2 equals 2. This is our system of equations, okay? So that's one way of, of interpreting the scheme. If we go ahead with this interpretation, then what's standing here? Oops, I forgot one half. Um, what's standing here? Uh, it says 1 times x1 plus 0 times x2, well, that's of course just x1, is equal to 1 half. Um, 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2, well, that's of course just x2, is equal to a quarter. And we recognize that that's our solution. Okay. Notice also that the matrix that's standing on the left-hand side here is the identity matrix. What is the identity matrix? Well, if we have any vector x1 and x2 and we multiply it with the identity matrix, 1 times x1 plus 0 times x2, that's x1, 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2, that's x2, get the same vector back. So this is the identity, this is the number one in uh, matrix notation. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not changing anything. Now, if we take a step back now and go back to a, to a situation of one equation and one unknown a situation that we had before, we get 4x equal to 1, of course, this means that x is equal to a quarter, but how do we actually, what are we actually doing here? Well, what we're doing is we're multiplying the equation 4x equal to 1 by the reciprocal of the coefficient in front of x, the reciprocal of course being 1 quarter. This results in 1 quarter times 4x, that's x uh, on the left hand side, and 1 times 1 quarter on the right hand side. So now if we have to solve a system of equations 
that has the that has the form ax equals b. The question is, can we find something like a reciprocal for a? Can we find an a, let's call it a inverse, that if we multiply the entire equation through with it, yields the identity here, the identity times x that's equal to x is equal to a inverse b. If this a inverse existed, we would have our recipe for a solution of the system of equations here in matrix and vector form. Yeah. This part is the is the decisive property. So a inverse a must equal the identity. And I'm also going to write it the other way around. A, A inverse must equal the identity. Now, in general, for matrices, commutativity is not a given. Um, however, if we do find an inverse, then, uh, then, then the product, the, uh, these two products here commute, actually, and A inverse times A is the same as A times A inverse. But in general, for two matrices, A and B, this may not be, this may not be true. A times B may not always be B times A. Okay, let's write, because it's actually more convenient here for inter interpretation uh, to look at, at, at this one here. Um, let's look at this matrix product. So our matrix A is given by 2, 4, 3, and 2. And now we want to multiply by a matrix A, A inverse, now, this here is A, and it is in R2 by 2, meaning it has all real entries. Actually, it has even integer entries, but they're certainly also real. And we have two rows times two columns. So the matrix A inverse will also have to be in R2 by 2. But we don't know the coefficients, so let's just give them names. Let's call them A tilde 1 1, a tilde 1 2, a tilde 2 1, and a tilde 2 2. And the corresponding the corresponding products that we have here now is 2 times a 1 1 plus 4 times a tilde 2 1 2 times a tilde 1, 2 plus 4 times a tilde 2, 2. I'm doing the same thing here for the for the second line, only I'm not going to draw these lines anymore so that they don't clutter my picture here. 3 times a 1, 1 tilde plus 2 times a tilde 2, 1. And here, 3 a tilde 1, 2 plus 2a tilde 2, 2. Now, this is a matrix of four entries, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it is the product of a with a inverse. The product of a with a inverse, so it's supposed to be the identity. So this thing here must be 1, 0, 0, 1. So I actually have two systems of equations here. One system of equations says 2 a tilde 1, 1 plus 4 a tilde 2, 1 equals 1. 3 a tilde 1, 1 plus 2 a tilde 2, 1 equals 0. And here I have 2 a tilde 1, 2 plus 4 a tilde 2, 2 equals 0. And 3 a tilde 1, 2 plus 2 a tilde 2, 2 equals 1. And I can solve these two systems of equations in exactly the way that uh, I have just described. Right? So I can Write this schematically, 2, 4, 3, 2, 
one, zero. And now I can apply elementary row operations to turn the left-hand side matrix into the identity. And over here, I get two, four, three, two, zero, one. And again, I'm going to apply elementary row operations to turn the left-hand matrix into the identity. But wait a second. Uh, I only have to do it once, really, right? Because then, if I go ahead and simply write the other system here on the right-hand side of this scheme as well, then I do this simultaneously, and I don't have to do it twice. So let's go ahead and do it. So I multiply by one half here. This gets me one, two, one half, and zero. Now I just copy the second row. If you like, you can do several steps in one go. I do this step by step. Now I am subtracting three times the first row from the second. So the first row is the pivot, and I'm just copying it because I'm not doing anything with it. Three minus three times one is zero. Two minus three times two is minus four. Zero minus three times one half is minus three half. One minus three times zero is one. Now I am multiplying the second row by minus a quarter. This gets me, I'm not doing anything in the first row, I'm just copying it. This gets me zero, one, Minus minus is plus, plus three eighth, minus one quarter. Now I'm going to subtract twice the second row from the first. So I get, let me copy the second row because I'm not doing anything. I get 1 minus 2 times 0 is 1, 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0, 1 half minus 2 times 3 eighth. Um, this is uh, 1 half minus 3 quarters, this is minus 1 quarter. And I get 0 minus 2 times 1 quarter. Um, so minus minus is plus, and two times a quarter is one half. Yeah. So I have obtained a candidate. So now I have the identity here, and I have obtained a candidate for A inverse. It remains to check that this is indeed A inverse. How do we check? Well, by checking if A, A inverse is equal to the identity. So I write A is again two. Four, three, two, and now my candidate for the inverse is minus a quarter, one half, three eighth, minus a quarter. Two times minus a quarter is minus one half, plus four times three eighth. 4 over 8 is 1 half, so this is plus 3 half. That's, of course, 1. Um, 2 times 1 half is 1. Minus 4 times a quarter is minus 1. So that's 0. Three times minus a quarter is minus 3 quarter plus 2 times 3 eighth is, uh, is 3 quarters, so that's 0. And two time, uh, 3 times 1 half is uh, 3 half. Uh, minus 2 times a quarter is minus 1 half. So all right, this seems to be working out. So I get 1, 0, 0, 1. And this is indeed the identity matrix 
and it checks out. So I have confirmed my candidate for a inverse here is indeed is indeed the inverse. Now what about our recipe x is a inverse b? Well, let's check that one too. Um, so we had minus a quarter, one half, three eighths, minus a quarter, times two, two. Well, minus a quarter times two is minus one half, plus two times one half is one, and three times, three eighths times two is three quarters, minus one half times two is minus one half, and so this of course gives uh, one half and, um, and one quarter. And we recognize this was indeed our solution x, so um, that one checks out as well. Okay, so we have seen that if we are in the situation where we have a linear system, two equations, two unknowns, then um, we can solve, of course, with, with different methods here, the, the traditional methods that you may remember from, from high school, but now we've also introduced a schematic way to, to solve by finding either the solution, this, is, this, is, this was uh, this part here, or either finding the solution or by finding in a very similar way here the inverse and then using the inverse to get the solution. Right? Now we can imagine a case where things don't go as smoothly. And so here I had the I had the, the system of equations um, 2x1 plus 4x2 equals 2 and 3x1 plus 2x2 equals 2. Let us assume that the um, second equation looks slightly different. And it just copies the information from the first. So, for example, we can take the and multiply the old equation by two, right? So we say four times x one plus eight times x two equals four. Then the 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 first relation and the second relation are really the uh, encoding the same information. What would happen if we were to try to solve this system of equations with our with our scheme here. So we would write 2, 4, 4, 8. Um, you, may, you may wonder why, why would you do this and I would agree with you in the 2 by 2 case but you can imagine that if we are in a, even in a 3 by 3, 4 by 4, um, 5 by 5 case it may not be that obvious. Um, so so how, would we, how would we see what's going on here? Well of course we would start again by Multiplying the first row by one half, this would give us one, two, and one. We have done everything with the with the first row, uh, with the second row, and now we would go ahead and subtract four times the first row from the second. This would give us four um, minus four times one is zero. Eight minus four times two, also zero. Four minus four times one also zero. Aha, we would get one zero row. Well, I haven't actually copied the, I forgot to copy the first row here, but because switching rows is also an elementary operation, I can just write it as the second here. It doesn't matter. The point is, I have uh, I've gotten a zero row and this would show me that the information contained in the, in the second row is the same as the information contained in the first. This would not lead me to a solution. However, it would still say, if we interpret 
this line here as the matrix product, um, or the, the product of a matrix of a vector, then this line would say 1 times x1 plus 2 times x2 is equal to 1, or of course this means x1 plus 2 times x2 is equal to 1. We've seen this before, of course. Um, so this is the only bit of information I can get, right? So, but this means that there are infinitely many solutions because if I if I pick any uh, if I pick any x2 or if I pick any x1, then as long as I pick x2 equal to um, equal to one half minus one half x1 for any given x1 I'm going to find a solution I'm going to have the solution or if I if I freeze x2 and I pick x1 as 1 minus 2 x2 for any given x2 I would have a solution so there are infinitely many because in this case I can freely choose x1 in this case I can freely choose x2 and so uh, one way of 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 representing um, of representing the solution set to this system, well, it's just one equation, but uh, um, to this uh, to this equation of two unknowns, is to say um, my my solution space is given by all vectors. Uh, now let's say I um, let's say I uh, I freeze. I freeze x2, then I have the x1 must be uh, x1 must then be 1 minus 2 times whatever is in x2, and x2 is freely chosen, right? So any vector of this type for any x2 in R is going to solve the system. And so if I just um, um, if I just write x x two here as a as a as a parameter, I can then write this set of equations as one zero the vector one zero plus um, minus two and one times x two, but I can also just call it r for a real number, right? So this would be a, a vector way of writing the solution space, which is in this case just a line, um, for the system of equation. And this, this expresses very clearly that there are infinitely many solutions in this case. Uh, why? Because I have two variables and only one equation that imposes restrictions on these two variables. So if you think about it intuitively, it makes a lot of sense that there will be infinitely many solutions in this case. Okay, um, let's stop here. Thanks for watching.